So today we have the final issue of the Death of the Family storyline in Batman 17. And it's been called the new golden age of the X-Men. We've got Brian Michael Bendis' Uncanny X-Men number one. And uh, don't tell anyone, but we're uh, doing the Secret Avengers number one. <laughs> So, we have the final issue of yep. Death of the Family. We started the show with the first issue of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, this is the f really... <laughs> and we're the ending the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It's too. all been for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all this show's been leading up to. Yeah. No, um, so yeah, it's the final issue, Joker's plan. Does it come to fruition? Does it get thwarted? Who knows? Uh, we, we know. know. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to tell you what we thought of it. So Dan, what did yeah. you think of Death of the Well, Family? you know, I mean, there's, it's, there's no secret of how much we've loved this. We have loved it. We've, we've praised every issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of hoo-ha on the internet um, about, I mean, I'm not, I don't think we should spoil it. No, 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 spoiler free. Yeah, so. Spoiler free the, this show. There's a lot of hoo-ha on the internet about how it ended. To be perfectly honest, I really, I really, really love the way it ended. Mm. I thought to have ended it the way that a lot of people thought that it was gonna end and the way a lot of people wanted it to end would have cheapened it. Mm -hmm. I think ending it this way, um, you know, ending it with a question mark, if you like, uh, makes you think more about the story. Uh, and, and, and again, I think what has what defined this is just great moments. There are so many great moments in this issue alone. I think it's, it might be the best drawn of all of them, and that's saying something. Mm. But, but really what it comes down to is I, there were moments in this book where I'm like... <laughs> oh, I don't want to I, 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 yeah, didn't, no, I didn't okay. want to turn the page yeah. and I was so nervous and excited and, and no other book has made me do that for a long time. So I love the way it ended. Uh, it, and um, yeah, I love the way it ended. I can't argue with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's safe to say that very few of the promises made at the start of this book were carried out. Well, I don't know if end. promises were made by Snyder or if people had inferred um, yeah, maybe, and they'd maybe kind of played level, along with them. Yeah, which is probably the case. Um, I've got to say, I did, I, I finally enjoyed it, obviously. Obviously. Um, there are a couple of moments in this book where I felt as though we were missing pages, if you know what I mean. Like, things resolved themselves off uh, script and it was kind of... To me, it resolved itself in an almost cheap way, like it was rushed to get to 17. Like what? Um, the, the stuff with the family. Yeah. Um, again, I don't want to ruin anything, but um, you, you know what I mean, just quickly. Yeah. Just, I, just, it, it, all this stuff. Yeah. I feel as though it... it <laughs> so cryptic. Yeah. I feel as though it was a bit of a cheap... Well, I mean, the people kind who of, know will know, I guess. Yeah. I feel as though it was almost a kind of a, a cheap ending to it. It was just kind of a like, uh, oh no, this is how, ah, no, it's fine. We're the bad guys. We can overcome it with just the power of love. Yeah, but also <laughs> I really think that that stuff isn't really what the issue is no, about. No, it's not. So. And I mean, this will go down as one of the best I Joker so. stories. It's one of the best Batman one stories I've read yeah. in, in ever. One of the best drawn uh, and the, the finale moment with yeah. the Joker and Batman is just oh, it's a thing oh, of beauty. exquisite. It's a, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, we have a new X-Men book. As I alluded to in my intro, people are just, X, for X-Men fans at the moment, mm. it, 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 ha it hasn't been better for a while. Like yeah. uh, Now we have Bendis' uh, Uncanny X-Men number one, which is his second X-Men book. Um, and even the editor kind of alludes in the back, I don't know if you read the, the back thing, but uh, he alludes to the fact that, you know, the, both books and the other X-Men books is sort of this one big tapestry. Mm. Um, so, I mean, you're not reading any X-Men books. I am not, no. Will you be reading this one? I, I think I will be reading it, yes. It was, it was a fantastic book. Really good jumping on point, it's got to be said. Um, the artist, uh, how do you pronounce his name? So someone else can embarrass themselves. Ah, oh, <laughs> dirty bastard was fine. How do you pronounce his name? Uh, B Bacalo. Bacalo. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. He drew the okay. first couple of issues of Wolverine and the X-Men. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And I remember not enjoying his art in that, uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And that, that, 
Mm. Um, big double spread is absolutely incredible. And he uses the, the Bende dot style that we talked about in Judge Dread number one in here as well. Not as like an entire thing, but just in subtle pages and subtle moments. And I think it's used really effectively and his use of color is fantastic. And the storytelling solid. You just, you can't complain about the storytelling. You know, Bendis just nails it every time. Yeah, I think bo both of us enjoy the way Bendis tells a story in the way yeah. other people don't. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I could have, I mean, you you could have written this review for me before I'd even read the book. Like, I knew I was going to love this, and I did. That's well, Cyclops in it. <laughs> it had a Cyclops, but like, oh, God, yeah, it had Cyclops in it. And, he, uh, and <laughs> yeah, it just it uh, as a, just so badass, mm. just so badass. I, I, I tell you what I didn't like. There's a twist at the end. We're not going to spoil oh, it. There's yeah. a twist. And it's not that I didn't like it. It's that just like, you know, and that's not something you want. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, oh. Yeah, I just did. I was disappointed, not from a storytelling standpoint, but just from the fact that uh, I was disappointed in the character, mm. which is great. Like that's, if you, if you want disappointment yeah. for your book, that's the way you want it. You want it, someone to be disappointed in yeah. the choices of a character. And I was, Di like, I was kind of down after a while after reading <laughs> it. I was just oh, like, man. oh, no, like, I just couldn't. But no, you, I, I love Pacalo's art. And uh, and I love the whole kind of revolution, join the revolution. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, I'm completely on Cyclops' side here. I liked um, Agent Hill in this. I thought she was cool. I thought it was well drawn. I, it's just such, it was just such a solid comic book. Yeah. I just... I can't, and, and, and all of the X-Men books that I've read have been completely solid, so I'm... Which as is an X great for yeah. an X-Men fan, bad for an X-Men fan's wallet. <laughs> well, they, that, is, that is absolutely true. Uh, so, the final book. Final book, uh, we have Secret Avengers uh, by a team that I, I've never read anything of theirs before. In fact, I can't, we don't have a book in front of us and I can't remember their names, but... Um, a fairly unknown team to myself, and it follows the exploits of Black Widow, Hawkeye, Nick Fury, Agent Coulson, and Agent Hill um, going on an adventure and sort of kind of bringing them together. Yeah. What do you think of this issue? I really liked it. Yeah, of course you did. I, it, I mean, I don't know what Marvel are doing so right. Like, it's... Oh, they're doing something, and I don't... And you know what it is? It's the fact that even, I mean, I'm buying so many books at the moment and I was, again, I pick up this book like I picked up, um, what was the other one that we read that I really liked? Uh, uh, Uncanny X-Force. Yeah. Just thinking, well, even if it's good, I'm probably not gonna be buying it. Yeah. But that's not, that wasn't the case simply because not only was it good, it was really different. It was really different to anything I was mm. reading and I loved the whole mystery sort of, I don't know, felt very futuristic, and I liked uh, the twist. I, I was like, ah! It was just, <laughs> it was exciting, and it, and it looks different than other books do. And, um, and these characters I really like as well, and I thought they did a really good job of tying it in with the film without making that seem a hokey, like it seems Budapest, to, yeah. yes. As soon as I saw it. that, I smiled and yeah. I was like, that's It's fantastic. on the cover as well, yeah. I was just like, yes. I thought that, I thought, I thought that was great. And, and um, yeah, no, the actual, the concept of this book, mm. which I didn't know, um, it sets it up for a whole load of interesting stories, mm. I think. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen. And, and what, final thing I thought that was great about this was that, you know, there's there's this whole ba balance between what what the characters of the book know and and you're like, okay, something happened there, mm. they've left it out, and I don't know. But also, there are great moments where the stuff that you know and the characters don't, mm. and and that is a great dynamic to have where they're making decisions, and you're like, oh no, and great. Great. Mm. And, and an introduction to characters that I thought I knew in, in a new world that I don't know. And yeah. I thought it was super solid. I've got to say, I loved the handling of Nick Fury. Yeah. That was fantastic when Hawkeye's like, um, isn't Nick Fury? <laughs> and he's like, this is Nick Fury now. Get over it. Leave yeah. it alone. I love that. Um, and the whole comparison the to Bond James Bond. Stuff. It's brilliant. And the fact that they're still talking yeah. about it later on. Uh, my, I suppose I have 
two major complaints with this book. Uh, one being, why is it called Secret Avengers? Why isn't this book called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or S.H.I.E.L.D. or... Well, you know just, why. I know, they need to tie it in for that Avengers thing, but I just feel as though the marketplace is so oversaturated with books with the second name Avengers on it that it can be almost daunting to a new comic book reader to go in and try and pick something up because, I mean, you've got Avengers Assembled, The Avengers, Secret Avengers, Young Avengers. There's just too many of them. Uncanny Avengers. Yeah, but I mean, if a kid is going into a comic book show, he's more likely to buy a book with Avengers on it than with Very Agents true. of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, and I suppose my other problem is, is Hawkeye, who is the kind of the main focus of this book, and he's very funny, and he's very witty, and he's very great. He's just great in it. But I'm getting all of that in Hawkeye. So I don't know. Like, I wasn't you're not getting taken... You're not getting what we had in this, in Hawkeye. I'm not getting the same interactions with characters in Hawkeye. But even but in terms of the plotting and the style of story? I don't think I was as taken with the story as you were. I, I found it a bit... I found it okay. I wasn't gripped by it. I didn't find the twist at the end overly. I suppose I don't like that dynamic of... Um, and it's going to sound ridiculous, but I don't like the dynamic of knowing certain things and not knowing others. Like, oh, I thought I, that was the best part about it. I don't like that kind of dramatic irony going on that they know things and I don't. And it, it, I mean, it, it's great for the type of book it is, you know, this kind of secret spy stuff. I figured that was actually a really interesting because it is all about secrets and lies and things like that. But that, it, it's just not what pulls me into a book, I suppose. So... I, I enjoyed it um, to an extent. I thought the dialogue in it was very good and I thought it was drawn very well. But I don't know if it's done enough to grip me in the same way that books like Uncanny X-Men have. And I don't know if that's a book that I'm going to be picking up further on. Down. I actually thought it was, a, it was a stronger comic book than Uncanny X-Men. Really? Yeah, I did. Uh, and I, mm. I was really pleasantly surprised. And I think it has such promise as to the type of things that it can do mm. that all these other comic books can't do just by the nature of these really cool, interesting concepts. So congratulations to Mario Moonfall. You won last week's prize of Avengers numbers one to three. So check your inbox for that. Yeah, and if you want to win a digital download of Uncanny X-Men number one, then all you need to do is leave a comment on this week's video and uh, we'll pick one at random and we'll let you know next week who won that. Indeed we shall. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, we are at Comic Book Show 1, where we post all sorts of show updates and things like that. We are, and Dale's Just Giving page is still still rocking on. If you yes, want to see me shave Dale's head to look like Quentin Choir and dye it pink, which I don't see how you can't. I, then, I don't see then either. The link, Am I getting there? The We're link, definitely the getting there. The link to that is in the description. Indeed. So... Join us on Wednesday when we're going to be doing more verses. We've got a couple of very interesting pairings coming up. Yeah, and we on Friday we have a very hot big issue for you. Yes, we do. So stay tuned for that. Ah, dirty master was fine.